Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Making Waves. Today we will be having an interesting conversation about career expectations for us Asians and our personal experiences about that. Um, again, before we begin, here are our land acknowledgements and vision statements. So let it be known that Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon is located within the traditional homeland of Mary's River or Empanufa Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations of Western Oregon. Today, living in descendants of these people are part of the confederated tribes of the Grand Ronde community of Oregon and the confederate tribes of Selats Indians. Phoenix, Arizona is on the traditional homelands of the Aki Mill, Atham, and the Salt River Mac Maricupa Pima Native Community. Uh, here at Making Waves, we try and illuminate the experiences of Asian and Pacific Islanders at Oregon State University. Facilitating dialogues surrounding culture and diversity, we hope to dive into some of the complexities of the Asian and Pacific Islander experience through topics such as pop culture, social identity, multiculturalism, etc. Among Many of the topics we wish to cover, we hope you can resonate with our stories as well as expose yourself to some new ideas and perspectives. Awesome. So today we have another special guest with us, and it is Benson Tan. Hi, everyone. Sorry, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Benson Tan. I go by he, him, his pronouns. Uh, I'm a currently an electrical engineer electrical and computer engineer with a minor in computer science. Uh, my current position at the APCC is that I'm a student peer, student success peer facilitator. Um, so today we're just going to talk about uh, career expectations as Asians. So I'm currently majoring in the STEM. So I have ex some experience of high expectations from my parents and like even strangers throughout my life. Uh, so the first question is just for everyone. Uh, what does your parent feel about you, uh, about your major? Let me introduce that. Um, yeah, I'm currently majoring in nuclear engineering and minoring in physics. That's intense. Um, my name is Suksavan. I am a PhD student in women, gender, and sexuality studies with a minor in queer studies and a certificate in geographic information systems. Sciences. <laughs> my name is Angela, and my major is in design and innovation management. My name is Becca, and my major is Ethnic Studies. So it does definitely feel like we're kind of split a little bit, or like we have some STEM majors, and then we have like some arts majors, which is cool. And so I think this would be a really cool conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the question was how our parents feel about our majors. Was that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, my parents were never like super strict on like, oh, you have to have like this major. I want you to go into this field. I want you to make like this much money. It was never that like um, forced on that. It was more just like do whatever you want to do and whatever makes like you happy. So I guess I'm grateful for that. And um, yeah. And when I graduated high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to go into. So I kind of took the course of just like taking different classes to find out like what I was passionate about and I just ended up kind of going into a mix of both design and business which is a pretty new major at Oregon State um, but so far I like it a lot and I can see myself like having a career in it and um, that is a major that my parents don't exactly really know what it is they're like what is like design and like business and doing different like management slash like marketing they don't understand because it's not like a title and they mm -hmm. and it's not it's new so um it's kind of hard to explain to other people and to explain to them what it is but so far they're just like you know they're not like bugging me about it so that's good yeah i would even go on that too of like when we a little quick history about universities really fast. So, like, <laughs> universities were designed for research. Well, I'll just say that is, like, like literally that's all it was made for, um, for white research, by the way. And so, like, like engineering um, and business or 
um, something that are specialized are like, like we think of trade schools. Well, those are technically trades because they prepare you for that specific profession, right? And so like everyone is so accustomed to it now of like, oh, I'm in engineering or I am in, um, uh, in like a science or like research, which is like really cool too. Um, and then since like WGSS, Women, Gender and Sexuality Studies or Ethnic Studies are not, are the research based, people don't know what it goes into because the end goal for engineering is to be an engineer. Well, like the end goal to WGSS or Ethnic Studies is something else. Like you could go wherever you want. But then that also puts on this this idea of like, like one is better than the other, but it's not true. <laughs> um, yeah. So I wanted to lay that out first. Um, but my my parents, so I grew up with a single parent, and mm-hmm. at first um, it was mainly like I was in science classes, and I was pretty good at the science classes. Um, and it was like, oh, you should be a doctor. And like, I didn't know anything else back then in like high school or like junior high. And so I was like, okay, I'll be a doctor. And then as I applied to the University of Arizona for undergrad, I was like, I know I don't want to be a doctor. Like, why why did I talk myself into that? Because like, that was the only thing that my mom told me or like my family told me was like, you're good at this. And so you should do it. But it's like, if I'm doesn't necessarily mean I'm like into it, like just because I'm good at some aspects of it. Um, And then I decided like, I took this one summer class going into um, high school where it was like architecture and so I really liked that or design and so um, I decided on architecture. I didn't tell my family until like I got in and I was like, I'm in the architecture school (laughs) and they're like, what? I was like, yeah, so we'll see. But they they were still like really supportive and they are still really supportive on like what I decide to do. Um, because I kind of do have that clear vision, if not, like I, I just been in school. So I think right now they're like, what's the end goal? Um, which I'm still trying to figure out too. That PhD though. I know. (laughs) I was just going to like piggyback off literally everything Angela and Six of Don had just said, like, Um, My parents have been pretty supportive of, like, my choices and stuff. Most of the time, it's, like, self-pressure on myself of, like, whether or not I'm making the right decision or if I've thought it through enough or um, what exactly I want to do. Because, like, Six of One had said, like, WGSS and ES are very broad. They don't really teach you, like, certain skills. They teach you more, like about the world I guess if that makes sense and like the systems Mm -hmm. within and so yeah you're not really preparing for a specific job and so that's the hard part and that's why my parents are like well you should probably like figure that out but um yeah ultimately I think they're just more like as long as you think it's right for you and you can figure it out and make something good of it then I think it'll be okay but yeah it's definitely mostly the self-pressure and like whether or not I'm making the right decision but I think, again, with all of yours, my parents were also surprisingly very supportive in my decision. Uh, To be honest, my dad is whatever. It's like he didn't care what I did. (laughs) But my mom was, is, is my, my mom is my stricter parent. And I thought that she would have been more like strict on me deciding to be like some sort of like doctor or whatever. And I mean, I mean, the conversation was brought up like here and there, but it was never really forced. Um, if anything, she really wanted me to be a nurse, you know, very typical <laughs> because all my cousins, my, all my relatives, all her her siblings were nurses. So I'm like, you got to be a nurse to look how successful your relatives are. Mm. But I'm like, OK, <laughs> but what I do find interesting, though, is like this, despite all of that, like she she still um, was supportive in whatever I decided to do and I just apparently threw myself into that stereotype of like yeah I'll be an engineer <laughs> mm-hmm. but 
Um, the interesting part I do bring up, though, is, again, the background of me growing up um, in an area where I was uh, the majority. Mm-hmm. And, like, really reflecting back on it now, like, I do think I did have that privilege of, like, not having that pressure of being, you know, like, you need to be succe- that successful or you need to, like, you know... Um, go for this certain type of career because this, this, and that. And the fact that almost everyone I grew up with or, like, the people around me were Asians, I feel like my education system was already built around that STEM field. So I felt like I was already, like, exposed to being within the STEM field from, like, my early education on. And I think that's part of the reason why it drove me to where I am now in terms of engineering, so... Like, yeah, that was a pretty interesting thing for me to, like, realize thinking about it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same with, with with all of you. My parents are surprisingly supportive, too. Um, my dad was the only one that suggested certain careers. My mom was just, like, she was so adamant about graduating high school. She was like, just graduate high mm-hmm. school, please. She was like, you can just work at McDonald's. You can take a break. You, you don't have to go to college. Just please graduate high school. That's what she was telling me, which is, you know, I think that's pretty odd because I, I have, like, other Asian friends, and their parents did not say that to them, especially their mom. Um, my mom was, yeah, she was very adamant at me graduating high school. Like, I think her worst fear was me dropping out of high school because that's, um, you know, it's just in today's society, it's tough to get a job if you don't have a diploma. Um my dad was supportive too. Uh, the only people that I knew that who really pursued to be a doctor would, would be my aunts and uncles. Um, I th- hearing Yuris's perspective is really cool because I kind of, as of right now, like obviously I'm currently in STEM right now. When I think about it a lot, especially since I'm going through it, kind of wish that I was like someone told me that I could do something else like in the arts and get a job out of it. Um, just so that I would know at least. Um, but then again, um, for for me, when I was growing up, um, I'm so I'm the first generation, so I don't have like, I'm like also like t- was like the only son too. So like I didn't really have like relatives who were successful. So I never thought that I could ever be in college. Actually, um, I was so scared to not be able to get into college because it was like a lot of pressure since I'm the first one. And so um, I thought to myself, I was like, you know, if if I were to get into college, you know, this is just me, probably people educating me. I was like, why would I risk my career going to somewhere else that's not like fully secured? And it gives me like anxiety where what if I take out loans and then like not be able to, to support my family who like already worked, like my, both my parents worked like two jobs. So I never saw them when I was little, which kind of sucks. So that's why I was just like, man, I really got to do the STEM. Um, so I felt, I kind of, not thinking about it, I kind of felt like I was obligated to, which kind of sucked. I kind of mm-hmm. wish, um, yeah, I just kind of wish that I, was, uh, I knew that I would have done, I could have done something else, I guess. Um, and just like not be scared of like the risk behind it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that was just mine, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of jumping off of that I think that fear of like not being quote-unquote successful or having that stability is in everyone's mind and I think that's the scary part for everyone is like that balance of something where you're passionate about it to an extent where it's not grueling and it's not taking like your life away from you but also yeah having that stability um Cause like it's so funny. Cause like for me, like ethnic studies, everyone's always like, "Oh, that's so cool! Like, what is it about? Like, what jobs can you get?" I'm like, I don't know, like anything. And then and people are like, "Well, what job do you want?" And then I'm kind of like, I'm thinking about going into human resources. And they're like, "Oh, that's really boring." <laughs> so I'm like, "It's stable though." <laughs> so like, I think yeah, that fear of stability is in everyone's the back of everyone's mind. And I think that's just like human nature is to be scared of like failure and the unknown because like how cool would it be to be like yeah a filmmaker or like an actor or something yeah an option 
what would be if it if it weren't for what you're majoring in now, what would be the next thing you would be doing, or you think you'll be studying, or yeah, that is a fun question. I guess I can go first, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I know I mentioned filmmaking for sure, but um, and again, this is why I I do think that you know spending time in in college, even though you're not driven to a certain major, it's a best place to discover what um, you're really passionate about, what you really want to do. But um, yeah, after working here at APCC, like it, it really is about like the storytelling and traveling for me. So if I could, I would definitely like um, visit like more indigenous communities, especially especially like me with like the Pacific Islands, you know, like just to mm-hmm. go around and film, tell stories and really share really share and make it you know produce videos and films to like really expand on like the communities that you know people the rest of the world don't really know so yeah i would definitely be do be 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 doing that (laughs) i love that mine always changes because i watch a lot of tv so like (laughs) i'll be watching transplant which is like a medical show i'm like what it would be like to be a doctor or I'd watch like how to get away with murder and I'm like oh, what it's like to be a lawyer or like you know what I mean like what would that be like so I'm like maybe I just want to be an actor I don't know um Ooh. but then I do like I was thinking about like television of like one of my best friends in undergrad did a BFA in film and television and I was like that would be so cool to do and I would definitely love that because you one you get to like analyze TV shows and write about TV shows and watch TV shows, um, but then you also can create your own work too. So you get the best of both. And I'm just too into TV. I love it. <laughs> Do you know who Ken Jong is? You know the 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 yeah. the, the comedian, the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's a, he originally was a doctor and then yeah. turned into mm-hmm. a Actor. comedian. Yeah. Bro, that's what the life. Dream. You can do it. You can do it successful. So much. I could. <laughs> I mean, for me, I think it would be really cool to be like a travel vlogger because you get like paid to just like travel and eat and do all that fun stuff. Um, 100%. But I think uh, a goal like for a career, I feel like being um, a production designer or a set designer would be really cool technically i could like achieve that dream with my major but i feel like that's like um an interesting field to like tap into than i really thought Mm -hmm. about before i think for me i've actually been thinking about this a lot because i have these conversations with my roommates um i've always wanted to be a like a film director or set engineer too but the more i think about it um so before i was gonna be like pursue like nursing because um in high school i would uh, intern at like hospitals so i had like some shattering experience for that and um i was so intimidated by getting to medical school so i kind of like resorted to engineering Uh, but the more i think about it like uh, my sister got like a full ride to medical school recently which was like a big deal and i remember i was you know i'm i'm i was there since the beginning you know her struggles and stuff like that and um uh i just made me rethink like because i remember when high school i'd wake up and i would go shadow at a hospital i would like talk to patients and talk to all of them and i went when i would go home i would feel good you know because your job is literally to help people and like mm-hmm. like help them stay alive mentally physically any type of way um but the more i think about it i think i'd probably do that just because um even if i would if i want to travel i'd be a travel nurse and that's like a legit career you can do all of that um do third world countries yeah it's just like something kind of cool i, I thought it, <laughs> it's fun that you, you mentioned the ken jong jonathan because um i actually <laughs> thought about pursuing medical school and like maybe around like 28 as engineer my part from medical school 
out there and make some money. Um, but it's just an idea. So yeah. Do it. Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of cool. I dare you. Follow Benson again. See where he is in five years. We can keep him accountable. <laughs> Ooh, actually, I changed my mind. Being like a counselor or like a life coach, I feel like that would be really fun to like, because I just like hearing people and giving them advice. <laughs> but I think like those like life coaches, they're like all over social media now too. And they're so inspirational. I'm like, who wouldn't love to do that? That's true. That's a good one too. Mm -hmm. for me like it's really funny because the way six of mom is talking about like tv and just imagining yourself and like <laughs> any position is literally how i like my 2 a.m thoughts i'm like i should just be an actor you can be anything you want <laughs> like then all seriousness like i think like i would really enjoy like yeah something to do with traveling or like angela just like said the same thing i was thinking of like um like a psychiatrist or something like maybe a relationship therapist like I really like helping giving advice as well but I think something else I kind of wish like I knew I liked more was would be like language I like to like learn languages mm. I think it's really fun so maybe like a teacher like an English teacher for a different country or like an interpreter or something like that would be really cool and like I wish I started that sooner but yeah I don't know that's really cool mm -hmm. you could be a polygot I think yeah. that's what they're called yeah right? dude that, like, i wish like that blows my mind i'm like pfft. right honestly it's crazy i wish i knew more languages too Same. wait becca which languages do you know so far English. or at least <laughs> 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 okay it's a start well, <laughs> i learned i took spanish like all throughout high school and then Same. when I entered college, I was like, I'll pick Spanish back up. But because I came in with certain credits, I had to wait until, like, one of the terms was open. Because, like, semesters versus terms changes, like, the lineup of the mm -hmm. progression, I guess. And I got to a point, I'm like, I might as well just start a new language. <laughs> so I started this term. I'm starting to learn Korean. Oh, cool. Nice. But I am by no means fluent in anything but English. <laughs> Let me <laughs> clear, clarify that. I don't even think I'm fluent in English yet. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? I'm oh. fluent in sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only know English, but I know a little sign language. Um, oh. I did like four years of sign language, which was cool. cool. Um and I actually wanted to do more of it and like trying to meet some people who are deaf and like seeing, I know someone in my community, I just reached out to them or actually they were um, doing work and I saw it and was inspired by them. And they're really cool and supportive. Um, and then I'm also trying to learn Navajo, um, mm -hmm. Dene Bazad. And it's really hard. It's one of the hardest languages in the world. Um, mm. And also we won the war because of the Navajo language, World War II. So that's pretty cool um, because it's so isolated. Like it, no other language is, is that same family, like the same, um, yeah, the language family, which is really cool. Um, and then I also would love to learn Laos, Laotian, mm. too. Mm. Do you know Korean Sign Language? I don't, I only know ASL. <laughs> so funny, oh my god, hilarious. What does that mean? <laughs> A little heart. Oh. You know. Cute. I'm gonna edit a barfing <laughs> edit to that after. A barfing <laughs> edit? <laughs> that was kind of gross. Did That's I really it. just do that? Just no, like a cringe edit. <laughs> I know. That's so funny.